Good morning and welcome to another Angry Alien Bulletin. I'm coming to you from the Alps in Switzerland. Decided to make a short detour after the conclusion of the IAC convention, but I'll be grabbing a train back to Britain tomorrow. But in the meantime, I have something for you to listen to. According to some very reliable sources, including some researchers with access to some extremely advanced equipment, and also a NASA documentarian, this is the first signal that we have received from an alien civilization. The first signal that we can confirm did not come from a human source and is artificial in nature. Interested? We're going to find out more right now. Now, for those of you familiar with this story, it may kind of sound like old news. It was way back in 2019 that the Parkes Radio Telescope in Australia picked up a narrow band transmission that appeared to be originating from the Alpha Centauri system, or more specifically, from Proxima Centauri, in the vicinity of Proxima Centauri B, an exoplanet orbiting this red dwarf star just over over four light years away. Let me go ahead and give you a little bit of information about the very strange Alpha Centauri system, a very unusual star system to be located so close to us. Very interesting coincidence that it ended up there because it is a trinary system three stars orbiting one another, one of these stars being very similar to our own, a second star that is also main sequence and orbits so close to the first star that it appears as a single star in our night sky. You can only see it from the southern hemisphere, but it is quite bright, actually the third brightest star in the night sky period, and then finally Proxima Centauri that is officially part of the system but orbits at a tremendous distance from the other two. Proxima Centauri orbits approximately 0.2 light years from the other two stars, which may not seem like a tremendous distance, but it actually is. 13,000 astronomical units, or 13,000 times the distance between Earth and and the sun, or 450 times the distance between the sun and Neptune. So it's kind of difficult to imagine that this third star is actually part of the same system, but it is much smaller, and the two main stars are far heavier and exert a tremendous amount of gravitational influence over a large area, therefore trapping the third star, Proxima Centauri, which gets a lot more press than the other two stars do because because it has a confirmed exoplanet within the habitable zone of the Red Dwarf, known as Proxima b. Proxima Centauri actually has two confirmed exoplanets, one of which is more of a super Neptune, a much larger planet than Proxima b, and also Alpha Centauri has at least one and perhaps two exoplanets as well larger exoplanets that could have moons inside the habitable zone of that star. So a lot of activity in this region and a lot of potential for life to develop. Although Proxima Centauri is a bit of a controversial topic because like typical red dwarfs, it flares from time to time, emitting tremendous amounts of radiation, which would most probably strip away the atmosphere of even a planet that has a powerful magnetic field. Although that has yet to be confirmed and the breakthrough Starshot mission still regards this planet as being compelling enough to send a proposed expedition perhaps two or three decades from now. But all of that having been said, how do we know that a narrowband signal, a promising looking signal, has actually been received 
from this star system given the fact that this news came out in 2019 and a couple of years later a number of papers were released indicating that it was so similar to background noise and the types of interference that human radio transmissions tend to produce that really it could be excluded, written off as a legitimate techno signature. Well, here's what's happened ever since then. Apparently, not everybody wanted to write this off. Instead, there is a prominent highly respected and European Space Agency funded astronomical organization known as Astron that has been examining this signal in much greater detail. And this organization has access to far more detailed information about signals that we have received over the last few years. They are able to analyze these signals in much, much greater detail and determine whether or not they actually originated from an extraterrestrial source than the sources that we had available to us back when this signal was discarded in 2021 and one of the reasons that it was discarded is because it was such a weak signal although it was narrow band and it did appear to be coming from an extraterrestrial source it was so faint that it was difficult to really tell it apart from terrestrial interference however thanks to the development of phased array multiplex technology which makes use of multiple radio dishes across the planet which weren't able to consolidate signals in the past because each radio dish is just a little bit further away from the signal source than other radio dishes on the earth therefore your signal was difficult to coalesce or to combine because of those slight differences in distance well the technology that Astron has at their disposal has now allowed this signal to be amplified and studied in much greater detail and the results have been dramatic to say the least according to professor simon holland who's a nasa documentarian and journalist and has apparently been in touch with astron for a considerable amount of time and astron has finally allowed him to publicize the fact that their organization has been involved in this study not only that They were the ones who sent Professor Holland a signal that you heard at the beginning of the video, and also in the preview if you happen to see that first. Let's go ahead and have a look at this signal in great detail in order to understand why this is such a big deal. We'll start with the beginning of the signal. And although some of you may have heard this signal before, maybe even a couple of years ago when it was first picked up by the Breakthrough Listen Project, which is funded in part by Mark Zuckerberg, by the way, what Astron has done is examine the Doppler shift characteristics of this signal that you can clearly hear in order to determine that the source was moving away from the Parkes Radio Telescope at the time that it was picked up. And by the way this short little audio clip that you're listening to is not the entire signal as a matter of fact the transmission lasted for several hours so what this suggests and what it always suggested is that the source of the signal was moving away from the telescope at a speed consistent with something that would be orbiting either the Proxima Centauri star or perhaps the Alpha Centauri star as well because the Parkes Radio Telescope was unable to completely lock in on the location. It wasn't quite precise enough, unfortunately. There was a small degree of uncertainty, which means that the signal could have originated either from Alpha Centauri, one of the two stars that is in that system, or from Proxima Centauri as well. Regardless, it confirms that the signal had to have come from an interstellar destination and was not human-generated 
background noise. And again, even though the signal is faint, it is narrow band. And narrow band transmissions are generally only created by artificial sources. And if it's not originating from human interference, then it must be an artificial signal from somebody else. But what makes this signal different from, say, the wow signal, which was also a narrow band transmission that appears to have come from a natural source. Well, the big difference is Proxima, Alpha Centauri, this entire star system is number one, very close, and number two, not consistent with any area that might have generated an artificial narrowband signal. In other words, no pulsars, no magnetars, none of the types of usual suspects that would blast out a narrowband signal, especially not in the frequency that this signal was detected at. So all of this is very, very intriguing. And by the way, we have only just begun to scratch the surface because Astron has not yet published their research and they may not publish it at all. They may wait for SETI to do it, assuming SETI is willing to do this at all, which they may not be. SETI is notoriously conservative and very hesitant to report on any signals that haven't repeated. That is an important detail that, at least as far as we know, hasn't happened with this particular signal. As far as we know, Again, Astron hasn't published all of their information. It's possible that we did have a repeat of this signal and they simply haven't revealed their information about it yet and their findings. But regardless of what's happening, something has triggered a lot of interest at Astron. Enough interest to allow Professor Holland to publish the fact that they are involved in this project. Again, keep in mind that Astron is a highly respected institution that's funded by the European Space Agency. An announcement like this could definitely put their funding at risk if there isn't a hell of a lot of evidence to back up their claims, and also compelling enough for Astron Astron to send a refined version of the BLC-1 signal to Professor Holland. Again, I really don't think that they would be doing all of this if they weren't getting ready for some sort of big public announcement. And there may be another source of incentive for SETI to actually move on this, even if they don't want to. Because apparently, again, according to Holland, the Chinese are researching this signal as well. They have access to similar equipment, to the same kind of phased multiplexing, and they may decide to come out with an announcement before SETI does beating us to the punch and becoming the first nation on the planet to solidly identify an alien techno signature. Again, we can't say any of this for certain, but in my opinion, this is one of the most compelling developments in the history of our search for extraterrestrial intelligence, because consider what this means. If this signal does indeed pan out, it means that there is an alien civilization just over four light years away from us. With our current present day technology, we could send spacecraft to meet with these aliens in the space of a couple of decades, making use of the breakthrough Starshot technology. We could send humans shortly after that, and also consider if they are indeed that close. How long have they been aware of our presence? And have they been sending their own expeditions? Is that the explanation for the UAP phenomenon? Seems like a compelling theory to me. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon and PayPal. By the way, I'm going to be releasing another Patreon exclusive video, this time about why I believe there is life, at least primitive life, on every single planet in the solar system. And I provide evidence to back all of this up, so if you'd like to check that out next week, make sure to join Patreon 
at as little as $3 a month, and we have a whole library of exclusive content there for you. So until next time, I urge all of you to stay angry about space. <laughs>